everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to Best of Designers. Today we're taking a look at a designer who is best well known for one game and we've talked about that, but not only just one game, this designer has kind of focused on a particular genre and really taken that genre to the forefront of gaming in general. We're talking about Matt Leacock and that genre is cooperative games. Matt has done a fantastic job and has worked on cooperative games to, from the very small child to adults and probably has made the best-selling cooperative game series in the world. Let's take a look now at my 10 favorite games from Matt, who is, by the way, one of the nicest, most humble designers you will ever meet. Number 10 is Nitwit. Now this one did not, <laughs> this one had on the box, from the designer of Pandemic. Well, didn't do as well as all that, but Nitwit is basically a Venn diagram game where you have these, uh, you're basically making these different Venn diagrams with different adjectives and you have to think of words that fit in all the adjectives. Some nice little components, not a great party game, but a very solid one. Number nine is Thunderbirds, a cooperative game with a strong theme that a lot of people who enjoy this puppet cartoon type thing. I'm not necessarily one of those, but I still thought the game was pretty good. And people who like the Thunderbirds really enjoyed this game with multiple expansions. It just felt a little bit different than other things. So my number nine, Thunderbirds. Number eight is Pandemic the Cure. Now, whenever there's a very popular game like Pandemic, you're going to find all sorts of variations. And in fact, Matt has done several of them themselves. And my list, I can tell you right now, isn't completely chock full of Pandemic, but there's a lot of Pandemic in it. But this one feels different than the other ones. This is a dice game. Uh, it's very portable, easy to carry around. And you're working together trying to stop diseases, but they managed to take this down to a much more manageable, quick, fast thing. It's not as good as the board game itself, but I did enjoy Pandemic the Cure. Number seven is Mole Rats in Space. This is a very, very light game, but it's for very young kids. This is a game when I played, I was like, wow, this is great. It gives kids basically two choices. You're going to pick which way to move your mole rats. You're trying to get them on the spaceship, but there's snakes running around and you gotta be careful with the snakes and you're all working together. And kids essentially have one choice, which normally I'd be opposed to in a game for adults, but for kids, this really worked well. Mole rats in space. Number six is Forbidden Island. This started off a series of which a third game is coming out this year, Forbidden Skies. That one's not out, so it's not on the list, but I'm sure it will. Forbidden Island, though, was like, hey, you thought Pandemic was popular? Here's a game for kids that was not only very inexpensive, beautiful production, and it was just a lot of fun, and it wasn't just for kids. Adults could play it, too. Really great little game. Number five is Roll Through the Ages, The Bronze Age. Now, civilization games are a hard thing to do, right? You have these really, really long ones that are great. They do a good job, but they're extremely long. Or you have short ones that kind of streamline everything out. This one streamlined all the way down to the core. I mean, it's just a dice Yahtzee style game, but it works. It's really fun. You roll the dice. You can get different technologies, which will give you points or special abilities. You're building monuments for points. You're trying to feed people, get more dice to roll. Uh, the box itself, you pick up the box, you're like, wow, this has a ton of game inside. And it really does. A great little game, Roll Through the Ages, the Bronze Age. Number four, Pandemic. You can't talk about Matt Leacock without talking about Pandemic. Pandemic itself is just a fantastic, wonderful game. It is the game that I am convinced is the reason cooperative games are so popular these days. It's a game in which you are all working together for a good goal to cure diseases and wipe them out. That's great. Different roles, multiple expansions, multiple variants from Cthulhu to um, Waters in the Netherlands. I mean, there's all kinds of things. And But Pandemic itself just stands alone, still being sold in stores today. A great game. Number three is Forbidden Desert, the second game in this series. Forbidden Desert... Uh, basically uh, kind of builds off the movie Flight of the Phoenix where you crash in a desert, but there's this mystical airplane and you're finding the parts for the airplane and then flying out while the shifting sand tiles, something which is such a cool innovative mechanism I've not seen in any other game, works really well. Great components, a more difficult game than Forbidden Island actually, and no one's calling this one a kid's game. It's great for all ages. Number two is Pandemic Legacy. This was the game that took the world by storm. Matt Leacock, working with Rob Davieux, took Pandemic, added in the legacy aspect from Risk Legacy, and made gold. I just watched this game last night. Some people were playing it, and they got to a point in the game 
where I knew what was going to happen and watched their expressions on this very pivotal thing. How did I know it was going to happen? Because I remember that event from my game so strongly, one of the most, the biggest moments of gaming ever. Just a fantastic experience. Yes, it's a one-time playthrough game, but it's so worth it. And my number one, Pandemic Legacy Season 2. Yeah, you might say, oh, come on, you're putting these for your top two because they're that good. Pandemic Legacy Season 2, built on the first one. While it didn't have the, oh my goodness, it, you know, that the first one had, I like it better because it takes the idea of Pandemic. The first one was just Pandemic with various things happening. The second one's a very different game, and it still has Pandemic-like aspects to it. Um, a lot of fun, a lot of cool storyline, and the most changeable legacy game that I've played yet that also worked really well as a cohesive story. So lots of fun. Matt is obviously known for Pandemic, but I think we should know him as the Cooperative King, because that's probably what he is. A great designer. Tell me what your favorite games of his are in the comments. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching the best of designers, Matt Leacock. <laughs>